and, and I was on a, I, I was reading second Corinthians 10 chapter 10 chapter verse 3 through 5 for though we walk live in the flesh we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. What is drug addiction? It's a stronghold. Verse 5. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And that's by using the Word of God. That's how we fight the devil. Now, you can carry the Bible around with you. You can have it sitting in your house on a coffee table. You can have it on a bookshelf collecting dust. But if you do not read the Bible, study the Bible, meditate on the Word of God, and, and most importantly, if you're not a doer of what you're studying and reading in the Bible, how can it, how can it help you? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And faith without works, the Bible says, is dead. Dead faith. Can dead faith save you? Mm-mm. It's dead. Faith that is alive is not only... He, this is what it says about true faith. This is what the Bible says about true faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So, faith is something that's real. If it's real faith. Faith is evidence of what you believe you already have. And so, you believe that you already have it. So, your faith is what shows that you believe that you already have what, what it is you believe in for. Faith is what you do, your actions, your words, your thoughts. Okay, now let's get back to Whitney Houston. I want I want to talk about the death of Whitney Houston. Not only Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Anna Nicole Smith, uh, Amy Winehouse, another famous singer. Uh, Anna Nicole Smith was an actress. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about these people because Satan, he, he ended up doing what he, what he wants to do to each of us. He did it to them. And these people were famous. They were wealthy. They had gifts, God-given gifts and talents, but the devil devoured them. And and in the case of Whitney Houston, what's was 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 even more interesting in her life is that when she, as a child she was raised up in the church. That's how she got her basic foundation of singing. You know, learn a lot of her singing skills and got her voice and everything toned up and everything and she started out in the church as a little young child her mother was uh, a gospel singer from what I understand so and it was reported you know it was reported on the news because I listened to the news just like everybody else about Whitney Houston's death and I watched the funeral on TV. It was reported that she carried a Bible with her everywhere she went. This was, this was reported by, uh, I think, one of her bodyguards. 
uh, that she carried a rag, an old raggedy Bible with her everywhere she went. And one of the speakers at her funeral uh, said, you know, that knew her said that uh, she would often talk about God, and you know, she was all she was talking about God a lot. So, if the devil can do that to somebody who obviously believed in Jesus Christ, knew about Jesus Christ, somebody who was in the church, at least physically anyway, because there's a, there's a difference between somebody who goes to church and somebody who the church is inside of them. You know, because the Bible lets us know that even the devil believes in God, you know, believes that God exists and that there is a God and he trembles. So the devil, the devil goes to church. <laughs> you can find some of the biggest devils sitting right up there in church on Sunday mornings, sometimes preaching from the pulpit, as we have seen. In many cases, we, you know, and recently we've heard about so-called pastors who, who were in the pulpit preaching every Sunday, but behind closed doors, they were living a, a different kind of a life. Even a life doing things that were an abomination in the sight of God, as far as, you know, it was reported that one pastor, well-known pastor, was having homosexual relationships. He was, and this this pastor was married. Pastor of a mega church in 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 the, in, in the United States, a well-known pastor, and he was married and was having homosexual relationships with some of the young men in his church, who he mentored as when they were children. He started out mentoring them as children. And when they became teenagers, started having a homosexual relationships with them. So just because a person talks about God, just because a person goes to church, just because a person carries a Bible with them, does that really mean that they're saved? Okay. Let's get into the facts, some of the facts about Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and others. Because this is going to be a series of videos for people to warn people about the dangers of not only drug abuse, but even now we have an epidemic of prescription drug abuse going on in America and it's reached epidemic proportions. Doctors are prescribing the medications and you know they prescribe them for good reasons but people are using them and abusing them to get high. <laughs> so this again is, is the work of Satan. We who are not in darkness have to shine the light on, on what Satan's tactics are and what he's doing. I myself personally, I have used drugs and alcohol in the past. When I was younger, I started out in high school, I started experimenting. In the 10th grade, I started experimenting with alcohol and, and marijuana. But after the age, when I, when I became a Christian and got saved in 19, uh, in 1981, I was at the age of 21 years old. God has started, the Holy Spirit came into my heart and started leading me and guiding me and giving me conviction when I would sin. And so every time I would drink and every time I would, I would, I would use marijuana, smoke marijuana, I was convicted. In my spirit, I felt that God was telling me saying to me that no that is not my best for you if you want to do that is not my will for you 
if you want to do my will, you need to stop smoking and drinking alcohol and smoking smoke smoking marijuana.